Alrighty, so now let's look at number eight. Number eight is a linear equation, and notice that now it has fractions on both sides, whereas number seven did not have fraction. So number seven, I went really slow, and I explained each step. Question number eight, I'm gonna go a little bit faster, but again, if I'm going too fast, you can slow it down, or you could go back to question seven to see me go through working out a problem more slowly. But here in question eight, notice that we have fractions, and if you remember in my previous problem here, in question seven, I said the first step is to simplify. And one of the ways to simplify, aside from getting rid of the parentheses, is to get rid of fractions. So the first step in question eight then is that we want to get rid of the fractions. So number eight here, I want to get rid of the fractions. So step one, Again, step one is about simplifying the left side and simplifying the right side. So we want to make this look pretty, right? So to make this look pretty, step one, we want to get rid of fractions. So the question is, how? Well, to get rid of fractions in an equation, what we do is we multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. So that word again, lowest common denominator. So when we look at this problem, when, I'm gonna rewrite this so that everything has a fraction. So the V is on top, minus seven over one is equal to one over four. The V is on top here, minus seven over four. So I'm just making it really obvious uh, which one is in the numerator and which one's in the denominator. If you have a whole number, you just write a one underneath. If you have a variable on the side here, that means that the V is in the numerator. So here, I'm going to look at the denominator and I'm going to ask myself, what is the lowest common denominator? In other words, what is the lowest common multiple? What multiple do the denominators have in common? So here, 3, 1, 4, and 4. So in other words, 3 and 4, because 1 is just whatever. 3 and 4, what do they both have in common that's a multiple? The number 12. So here, the LCD is 12. So what I do with the number 12 here is because I want to get rid of fractions, I'm going to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. So I want to get rid of fractions, I'm going to multiply by 12. So here, I'm going to multiply by 12, multiply by 12, and when you multiply, you multiply it on top. You multiply by 12. I multiply everything by 12, and you're like, what in the world does that do? Well, what it does is that it's going to cancel out or divide out with a denominator. So 12 over three, that's gonna divide out just to become a four. 12 over one is just 12. 12 over four, guess what? That's gonna divide out. 12 divided by four becomes three. 12 divided by four here becomes three. So here, the bottoms is just a one, right? Because 12 divided, by four is three, four divided by four is just one. So all these just becomes one on the, on the denominator. So as a result, now when I just look at this first fraction, negative five V times four is gonna give me negative 20 V over one. But I don't need to write one because the, if the fraction is just over one, it just becomes a number like that. So notice that I get rid of fractions, which was the point of this. Minus seven times 12 is 84, right, 14, 84, yeah. Here, 1v times 3 becomes 3v minus 7 times 3, 21. So notice, no more fractions. So I'm happy because that was the goal of step 1, multiplying by the lowest common denominator. Now I ask myself, okay, so remember we need to combine like terms on the left side and right side, can I combine these two? No, different animals. Can I combine these two? No, different animals. So step one is done. Step two, I'm gonna now decide whether I want my variable, my V on the left side or on the right side. So notice here, step two in the previous problem, decide which side you want your variable, left or right. So again, it doesn't matter which side you want it. Um, since I said left on the other problem, now let's just put right. So let's say I want it on the right side, just to 
mix it up a little bit, but it doesn't matter which way. So if I want it on the right side, here's 3v minus 21. So what does not belong here? The negative 21. How do I get rid of the negative 21? Recall in the previous problem, move all terms with a variable to that side by adding or subtracting. In other words, add its opposite. So if I want to get rid of negative 21, I just add its opposite. So negative 21 plus 21 becomes zero. Whatever you do left side, you must do to the right side. So as a result, 21 plus 21 just becomes zero. On the right hand side here at 3v, on the left side, does 21 add to this one or does 21 add to this one? It adds to this one, right? Because this one has a V, but this one doesn't. So the negative 20 V stays the same. If I add these together, I get 63 minus 63. I'm just double checking my work right now just to make sure. Okay. And again, I'm looking back. I want everything on the right side. So here, I need to move this guy to the right. So to get rid of this from the left, I'm going to add its opposite. So I'm going to add 20V. Add 20V. So as a result, this becomes 0. The left side now becomes negative 63 is equal to, I can add these two, I get 23V. All right, step four. So step four. Nope, I'm sorry, step three, can't count. <laughs> step three, solve for the variable by dividing both sides by the coefficient. So here, I want V to have a one in front of it. How do I get rid of the coefficient? I divide by the coefficient. So if I divide both sides by 23, remember if I divide by 23, what's 23 divided by 23? Just one. So on the right side, I just have one V or just V. The left side, I have negative 63 over 23. And then I want to ask myself, okay, can I simplify that answer? Can there, is there anything that divides by 63 and 23 evenly? So we kind of think, okay, they're not even numbers, so not two. How about three? The top I can divide by three, but the bottom I cannot divide by three. If I plug it into my calculator, I'll get some decimal. So in other words, long story short, this becomes the final answer. And of course, if you like, you could always do step four, which is to check your work, plug this answer back into the original, see if the left side equals to the right side. And in this case, it does equal to each other, and that is the correct answer. Here's another example of solving equations with fractions in them. So again, I'm going to go through this probably a little bit faster than number eight and seven, but if you need me to slow it down, feel free to pause and rewind and or go back to number seven and eight, where I go through the steps a little bit slower with question seven and eight. But right now we're going to go through number nine here. Um, so solve for you. So in this problem, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of fractions. How do I get rid of fractions? I'm going to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. So if I look at the denominator here, I have 3 and 7. The lowest common denominator is 21. The lowest common multiple of 3 and 7 is 21. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. So, and as a result, that should, and this, as a result, that should get rid of all fractions. So this 8 here, I could rewrite it as 8 over 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 21. So I'm going to multiply this side by 21. Put a parenthesis here, multiply this by 21, put a parenthesis here, multiply by 21. The reason why I put parentheses is because whenever you multiply something with something else, if there's more than one term, you know you need to dis distribute. So the parentheses emphasizes that you're going to distribute. So when we multiply by the lowest common denominator, notice that 21 and 3, they're going to simplify and divide out. 21 divided by 3 will give me 7. So I get a 7 on top. 21 divided by 7 will give me a 3. 21 divided by 1 will just stay as is. So now as a result, when I multiply, I'm going to distribute through. I'm going to get 14u. 7 times 2u is 14u. 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. Plus 3 times 2u is 6u. 
plus 3 times 8 is 24 is equal to 21 times 8 is 168. And of course, you can use a calculator, but I'm just trying to do it by, by, um, by, by um, calculation here. 8, 16. Okay. So notice when I do that, there's no more fractions. So that makes me happy because there's no more fractions. So now, remember step one, we're still making things look pretty. We're simplifying. So next step is make sure the left side, all the like terms are combined, and the right side, all terms are combined. So here, when I look here, what are similar terms or similar animals I can combine? Well, I notice 14u and 6u are the same animal or like terms. So I'm going to add those two together. So I'm going to get 14 plus 6 is 20u. Next, I'm going to do negative 56 plus 24. Negative 56 plus 24 is going to give me um, 32, minus negative 32 is equal to the right side, which is 168. I'm just double checking this. Okay, so therefore, so this is step one. So step one is done. So look at how something ugly became something pretty. And that's what we call simplifying. We went something complex and made it simple looking. The power of mathematics. Step two, decide where do you want your U? Do you want your U on the left side or on the right side? Well, notice there's just a U on the left side. There's nothing on the right, no U there. So I'm gonna decide my brain, you know what? I'm gonna keep U on the left to make my life easier. So if I keep U on the left, that means the negative 32 doesn't belong here. So I'm going to add 32 to both sides. So when I do that, negative 32 plus 32 is just 0. What's left is 20u is equal to 200. Okay. okay, so all the u's are one side. Everything that doesn't have u is on the other side. Step 3. Step 3 is now to solve for u meaning we want u to be sitting all by itself with the number one in front of it. And we do that by dividing by the coefficient. Well, the coefficient of u is 20. Whatever you do left, you do the right. So 20 divided by 20 would just give you one. So what's left is just one u or u is equal to 200 divided by 20 is just 10. Okay, and um, I know before I kind of breeze through checking your answer but here let me just stop and make sure that you do know how to step check your answer so if you want to check your answer plug 10 into your original problem so if you plug 10 into your original problem you have 2 times 10 minus 8 divided by 3 plus 2 times 10 plus 8 divided by 7 and the question is does this equal to the right side which is 8 or is this equal does the left side equal to the right so here, when I do this, 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 8 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Plus 2 times 10 is 20. 20 plus 8 is 28. 28 divided by 7 is 4. What's 4 plus 4? 8. So ta-da, the left side does equal to the right side. So we know that our answer of 10 is correct.